Coming up on Fresh Dev, we talk about file structures, plugin headers, and the WordPress.org repository. And I'll show you where not to use the README file. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Fresh Dev. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Scott. Scott, always a pleasure to see you and be joined by your greatness of coding knowledge. Why, uh, thank you. Why are you watching this show? Well, maybe you stumble upon some you know, hard things in WordPress. I need to change my background or I need to code a plugin or what's a theme, what's a function file. Well, you've hit the right place. Scott and I join you to talk about those such things. Uh, go ahead and hit subscribe in uh, uh, YouTube. We want to hit over a thousand fans. We're almost there. Almost there. Slocumstudio.com. We do WordPress stuff. Need help? Drop us a line. Today is part two. That's right. Part Scott two. bringing us down that journey of creating uh, your very first WordPress plugin. Uh, today we're going to talk about, uh, we'll start it off uh, with talking about choosing a file structure. That's right. So last week, we'll kind of just do a quick recap, maybe. Mm -hmm. Talked about coming up with your idea, making sure that nobody else has your idea, um, and that it's actually feasible for you to you know, be able to go ahead and create this plugin. And today, we'll get into a little bit more of the technical details. As Matt said, choosing a file structure. Uh, you pretty much have two options. I mean, there could be a couple more out there. You have the single file or single directory approach, and you also have the multiple file multiple directory approach so we'll mm -hmm. kind of go through uh, let me ask you those. this question the is you sit down to develop a new plugin how do you know which one to pick um, and and more likely or not do they end up in the multiple directories is, is what I'm thinking that's yeah I would say that's <coughs> correct most most of the time uh, it really depends on what your plugin is going to do mm -hmm. uh, usually your single file single directory, uh, would be a very simple plugin. You're doing, you're performing one action. Go ahead and maybe put that in a single file. You don't have thousands of lines of code mm -hmm. uh, to organize and keep managed. Mm -hmm. um, and just to kind of elaborate on that a little bit, WordPress does allow you to put your plugin into a single file within the plugins directory. So you don't actually need your own directory for your plugin, but it's I think a good idea to put it in a directory anyway. Uh, and going on to your point about ending up in a multiple directory structure, I think if you start out with your own directory, you can always build that up. When, and you, you can always switch and move it into a directory, uh, but it's good to, I think, start with a directory and the file in there, uh, and then you can always build it into the multiple directories and files and so on and so forth. So yeah, it's uh, like cl it keeping your house clean. I mean, it's yeah. You know, how are you going to keep your stuff organized? That's right. Um, that kind of thing. Cool. Yeah. So the single files uh, structure might be good for beginners, just kind of getting in there, dabbling around. You know, building your first plugin. Uh, multiple directories and files are going to be. Uh, they're gonna. It's gonna allow you to manage your code more effectively. It's gonna break it down into those manageable pieces. You can break certain functionality into specific files, and then mm -hmm. that way you go in to that file, and you know this file only does X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. and the other one does A, B, and C. So you're yep. able to, you know, manage your code a little more effectively. And also, you can break down your uh, directories within your plugin, um, and Ha include things like images, CSS files, JavaScript. Yeah, uh, I want to have all libraries. my styles in this folder. I want to have all my Java in this folder. You know, just keeping it all organized. And like you outline here, you know, it's going to be useful when you st when your plugin starts to grow, right? Yes, so definitely. When you sit, when you when you go through episode one, you say, "What kind of plugin am I making or developing?" You know, you start to kind of think, like, "Hey, is this going to be an e-commerce plugin, or is this just going to be <laughs> yeah. a, a a plugin that you know?" shortens links or something you know more simplistic mm -hmm. um good stuff yeah so that's a little bit about how to uh there's organize. nothing with like uh you know optimizing there's no performance hits or anything like that just maybe people out there that are thinking hey you know if i have all these different folders it's strictly just an organizational yeah i think that could be <coughs> performance hits but <coughs> i think with only really large okay. plugin files and, and plugins i don't really think there would be uh, too much of a performance issue uh, on your probably 
nine percent of plugins out there. All right, great. So now we we know we're going to store things. We know we're going to organize things. Let's get into the plugin specifics, specifically uh, <laughs> with the uh, plugin header. Okay, uh, that's where we start to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Yeah, that's right. So every plugin has to have one main file, uh, and this file has to have a header at the top of it. And WordPress looks at that header and um, basically parses the information. Uh, and, and stuff you can include in this header include the plugin name, which is actually required. Um, but some optional information would be a plugin URI, so where can people find the plugin. Right. Um, author, you know, yourself, your studio, wherever you work, your company. Um, Multiple authors, if necessary. Author URI, where can they find you? Where can they learn more about you? Uh, you can put a description. And one of the things that I would include, even though I believe it's optional, is a version number. That way you can keep track on when you're updating your plugins. Also, your users will get notified when there's a new version that comes out. Um, you know, So that's a good idea to include that. Yeah, so it's... It's like the README file of for developers. It's like when you want to find out what this plugin is all about, everything is in that pl that plugin header. Um, I maybe I shouldn't have used the word README. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's the way a non-developer looks at it. Yeah, right? like yeah. If I, I guess. How do I want to figure out what this plugin is? Well, I'm gonna take a I'm gonna take a peek into the plugin header and see this stuff. Yeah, and we'll talk more about Readmes in a second. Sweet. Um, so I guess the next question, at least. In our research was, do you want to host it on the WordPress repository? And we talked about this a little bit last week, mm -hmm. but we only briefly touched on licenses. Mm -hmm. We'll go into a little bit more uh, during this episode. Uh, so, would, you know, you have to decide whether or not you want to host it on the repository. What are some of the benefits you might get out of this? Uh, you can keep track of the number of downloads. Users can comment and actually rate your plugin. Um, and then... Uh, as they call it, exposure, because you have that one centralized repository. Uh, there's also some private, you know, repositories out there. If you, you know, team up with them, I'm sure you can get your plugin listed on there as well. Mm -hmm. um, just remember that if you do host on the WordPress repository, you have to be GPL 2.0 or later mm -hmm. uh, in order to be accepted. And you uh, probably have to do things like have the correct plugin header and all that stuff in place, which is why it's important to talk about the structure and and the foundation before we, before you make that move to the dot org, right? Definitely. Yep. So and uh, there's a couple of thing, a couple of reasons why. Because actually, and, and one of those is they'll manually review your plugin, look at the code, make sure it's not malicious, and um, especially for your first plugin that you've submitted, um, they're really going to go in and you know take a look at that, make sure everything's up to par and WordPress coding standards. Uh, we mentioned that last week. Mm -hmm. um, and they say that there's a few restrictions. There's actually about 20 or so that you kind of have to follow. If you read through it, they have detailed, uh, you know, documentation. Basically stuff like can't do really anything illegal or shouldn't. Right. Um, they know that that can vary, you know, what's illegal where here and there. Right. Who knows? Uh, you can't steal another user's code mm. um, and put it and claim it as your own. You know, stuff like that. Uh, any of your libraries like javascript libraries or something they have to be gpl 2.0 or later as well so that's something to keep in mind um and it's pretty easy to sign up you're just going to go to wordpress.org find the plugins repository um you'll sign up they actually classify it as a vague amount of time uh depending on their you know backlog i guess on when you'll your plugin might be approved or reviewed They'll go through that manual review process. Um, once you have signed up, you'll get access to the subversion repository, and that's where all of the public plugins are, kind of more of the developer you know, aspect. You can keep track of versions and, right. and whatnot. Um, so somebody is going to say they've, they've sketched out their plugin, they know what they're going to build, uh, or they get their idea, they know how to organize it, they filled out their plugin header, they want to host it on WordPress.org repo, now they have to go and sign up for that account yep any kind of approval process for those you know might be wondering like do they have to qualify you first or are they only looking at the plugin once you once you upload it they only look at it once you upload the plugin so okay. it's actually a regular wordpress.org account if you don't already have one of those gotcha you just sign up and you submit the plugin and then they manually review the plugin there's no pre-approval process or anything like that so anybody out there can submit a plugin as long as it follows their guidelines gotcha um, and then the real README comes right. into play. Yes. Um, 
I don't know why I mentioned that before, but here it is the right way. Um, <laughs> why is it important for folks to have a README? Okay, so you put your plugin on the repository, you get approved, um, you upload your files. WordPress actually parses this file or p basically picks apart this file um, called your README, and it outputs the tabs for that particular plugin page. So when you go on a, a plugin um, page and you see frequently asked questions or you know change log, something like that, that's actually specified in the README file of the plugin. Uh, and that's actually included in the download of the plugin as well when you download it. But you'll want to uh, include um, your WordPress version, uh, what version of WordPress does your plugin actually work with? You can include other details like is it compatible up to you know the latest version, only compatible up to a certain version so people will know. Um, you can include authors or just one author if you need to. Screenshots, you know, kind of a walkthrough for your um, people who might download your plugin. Also, you can include um, frequently asked questions, as we mentioned. Um, and you can actually create your own arbitrary sections, as they call it. So you can, you know, have a, a specific instruction manual for a certain part of your plugin if you wanted to. Um, so that's like it's going to set the framework for when you go to WordPress.org, search in contact form. And then you look at somebody's contact form plug and it's got the header, it's got the name. That's it's got correct. those tabs that go across, screenshots, installation help, frequently asked questions, that kind of thing. That sets the stage for all that stuff. Yeah, that's right. So it's basically the data and then WordPress sets it up in the view uh, as we, you know, we've all seen in the plugin repository. Um, there's actually a generator out there too. Uh, there might be a couple more than, than just what we found, but uh, it really helps you out because the README, uh, I forget the name of the markup language that it uses, uh, but it has to be in a specific format. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a plain text document, but there's some formatting um, to specify those sections, those screenshots, mm -hmm. the frequently asked questions. You can actually bold fonts and italicize certain fonts. So uh, you can get a little creative with your, uh, you know, readme files as you see fit and as you build your plugin going nice. forward. So. so there's no other fundamental things that we should be doing uh, before we start getting our pen to paper. Um, we've got... We've thought about it. We know what we're going to look at. We've kind of done some research, see what else is out there. Can we contribute to another plugin? Should this be its own plugin? Um, you've organized. You kind of figure out, hey, I'd probably be doing multiple directories, keep everything organized. Might yeah. as well start start safe, uh, better safe than sorry now. Um, do your plugin header. It's the basics. You know, my plugin version point one or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, fill out the readme file with all the important stuff for WordPress to know about me. Create the WordPress account. Now I'm ready to go and actually start putting some code into this plugin. That's right. That's what we're going to talk about next episode. Yeah, we'll be getting into some actions and hooks and you know what that entails. Sweet. Well, I know I look forward to it. I know you folks look forward to it. Do you have any questions so far uh, in part two about building your own WordPress plugin? Let us know. Drop it in the comments. We're moving too fast, moving too slow. Let us know what you want to see from this series. And did we miss something, too? Did we miss something? <laughs> yes. Uh, as professional as Scott is, sometimes he misses something. You never know. I miss things all the time. <laughs> you know, that's what that's the process of elimination when it comes to me. That's right. Um, go ahead and hit subscribe on YouTube. We want to have over 1,000 fans. SlocumStudio.com. Do you have a project you're working on? Do you have a client you're working on that you might need a little bit of help with? Uh, check out our launch session. We'll sit down with an hour-long consultant, consultancy with you. Share your screen with us. We'll look at your project. We'll give you some advice, show you how to use different things you might not know about yet. Uh, and check it out. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.